So today we got a little project. We're gonna do six quarts of oil, but before we begin, we're gonna run the CRC turbo and valve cleaner through the engine, which I do before every oil change. And it's just in time because in a few hours, from what I hear, there's gonna be a snowstorm. A snowstorm that lasts for three days. Step one, open the hood. Already I can see there's a problem. We got dirt. We got dirt. It's not as bad as I thought. But no doubt I should have brought my armor on. So I got about 33,000 miles on the car. I bought it when it had 17. It was rough. It, the idle was really wobbly. There was a lot of issues. I learned a lot about GDI motors during that time. And I believe that this is the only solution to the GDI carbon buildup on the valve problem. Um, I've been using it uh, at every oil change. There is one oil change I skipped, but I've been using it at every oil change. And it has proven to deliver a rock solid idle. If that's any indication of health in this engine, uh, it's been running great. My idle's stable. It doesn't do the wobble. It doesn't do the dead miss as long as I keep up on this. I've also been using premium fuel only, 93 octane, not the cheap 91 octane. I only go to name brand stations, you know, Sunoco's, Mobile, places I can trust. Um, and then also the last thing is, hold. Since I got it, I've been using Dexos 2 Valvoline synthetic oil. And the change has been astronomical. Let me t explain. I used to have massive buildup of oil. Hold. I used to have massive buildup of oil in my uh, intake track by the PCV. That doesn't happen anymore. I used to lose oil when I first bought it. That doesn't happen anymore. Between oil changes, it's exactly the same level as when I changed it. Um, again, the car's running rock solid. So the only reason I really wanted to come around with this video is just let you know, use top quality fuel, oil, and change your oil frequently. Uh, and keep your air filter clean because also the airflow through here has to be at a certain velocity for this PCV valve to operate correctly. If this is clogged, it will affect this and you won't get proper ring seal and you start burning oil. So you want to keep everything in tip top shape on this car if you want it to serve you well. Yes, there are some cars. I've, I've worked on some cars that have been neglected for 100 plus thousand miles and they still run and they run great. This motor's at the extreme end of pushing the limits of what's possible between horsepower and efficiency with the turbo. I think it's in the GDI. It's at state-of-the-art, unproven technology. Relatively new technology is probably a better way of saying it. And it's still being proven. And uh, by the time this gets perfected, we're probably all going to be driving electric vehicles anyway. Uh, but for now, in the lifetime of this car, I'm going to take care of it the best I can. And I'm going to use this stuff because it works. I should not have to sandblast my intake valves. Just seems like the ridiculous. And you can see on the picture here, that's pretty much what happens. Build up. Keep it clean. This stuff works. It may not be perfect, but it's better than doing nothing, which means a huge bill at an auto dealer if they want to pull this apart and clean them for you. So we got the uh, C 
CRC in the engine and now we've just revved it three times up to 3,500 RPM. Now we let it idle for one minute, then shut it off and let it heat soak for one hour. Then we go for a drive. So the reason you change the oil after you do this is because to some level, the CRC stuff gets in the crankcase. It gets past the rings and gets in the crankcase, which dilutes your oil. That's terrible. Um, you don't want that. So it's best to do this right before an oil change. Change your oil and then everything's fresh. Uh, I also read that in some GDI motors, you can get carbon buildup in the piston rings. This stuff actually breaks that up if it's happening. So overall, uh, to the best of my knowledge, it's the best thing you can do for an engine like this. All right, it's been soaking for an hour. It is time to go for a drive. And uh, hopefully we have time to do the oil change before it gets too dark. My engine light came on, so I'm hoping it's just because perhaps a lean condition from the CRC, but I've never seen that before. And uh, I'll change the oil, then check the engine light code to see what it was. I'll let you know. Here's a little jack, isn't it cute? Look at that, I can one-hand it. Excellent. This little doodad, little slotted jack pad. It works perfect for this car and gives you confidence when you're jacking it up that you're not gonna damage something. See, there's a little slot here. Oh, it's so horribly disgusting. My poor car. Can you see that? See there, there's a slot. So you put it on there, and you just get the thing. <laughs> All right, this is the first use of a Harbor Freight Jack. I don't know how I feel about it. I feel like I'm running out of hydraulics here. I need to be, was I supposed to do something? I only get movement in that last, huh, it's kind of weird. It's like it doesn't have enough fluid in it. Oh, there we go. A little more bite when I go all the way up. All right, is that high enough? Yeah. All right, lowering it down. Oh, now it's a totally different jack. I gotta admit, I really like this jack. It's so light, it's so easy to move around, and I carried it upstairs with one hand. I don't know why it is, but every time I change the oil, there it is. It's a 15. I forget what size it is. A little dirt. Pan coming in. Oh, just barely. Just barely squeaking it in. All right, Mr. Bolt. It's you and me. Don't get my oil, my gloves all oily. Down, oh, you're dripping. It's inevitable. Oh, it's inevitable. Those gloves will have to be washed. We gotta, we gotta drop that oil filter. Can I get it? With just my hand? Come on, oil filter. Be my friend. Such an awkward position to be in. <laughs> I might need my... I got a baby filter remover. Hang on. I'll be right back. Woo. This is the mini wrench. Oh, I will be defeated. Oh, did it move? It did! Oh, the two hand friendship. We good? Can we see that? 
can, but it is a thing of beauty. It's coming down. She's loose. Oh, that guy got that on my sleeve. <laughs> oh, the glamorous life. Right here. I got on my sleeve. It's on my sleeve. We'll be up top soon enough. Don't worry. Don't worry. This is just underneath guy stuff. Mini wrench to the rescue. All right. I got the headlamp. We are gold now. Ah, yeah. <laughs> um. And of course, I'm gonna say it, but everybody knows, you take a little bit of your new oil and you put a little bit on the O-ring or a gasket here on top of your oil filter. Also, when you pull the old one off, always make sure that the gasket came with it because if you try to put this on top of your engine and the gasket stuck to the engine, this will leak and spray oil everywhere. Uh, not that I would know about that in having to clean up an entire, I don't know, line of oil as I backed out of the garage before. That was a nightmare. See that? Got a little, got a little oil there. A little bit on the finger. It's all good. It's all good. Coming in. All right. Got some extra light here. I'm going to reach up. Put the new oil filter on. I also have to put the bolt on. Oh, where's the bolt? Give me the bolt. The bolt. All right, bolt's going on. Engine is empty of oil for the most part. I'm going to tighten it right down. Two mm, foot pounds, <clears throat> foot pounds, just snug but not overly tight. Thank you. I can't see, so I'm going to use my hand to make sure no gasket is attached to the mounting surface, to the smooth machined oil filter surface. And it's not, it feels great. It feels like disco. Now, this, I don't know, yeah, there it goes. Blind as can be. Can you see? Can, can you see, Mr. GoPro? I can't. And then I tighten it down with my hand. Snug, but never too tight. Very good job. Thank you. All right, now that we have sealed the bottom of the engine, we are going to pour six quarts of oil. Six quarts right here. We put the bolt back in, sealed the bottom of the engine. We put the new oil filter in. So as we put our new oil in, it does not leak out the bottom onto the ground. That's easy to do, believe it or not, to forget to do that. We verified gasket on the oil filter, came with the old oil filter and was not stuck to the engine. And then we put the new filter on, oil filter on, uh, hand tight, snug, but not overly tight. I never use a wrench to tighten an oil filter, just my hands. And it's just mechanic feel. But you can over tighten it and you can have a serious problem if it's over tightened trying to get it back off. All right, now here's the big, the big one. This is the fiver. Big fiver's got a nice seal on it. I like the Valvoline. It has worked really well for me. I, I guess I'm kind of, I guess it's safe to say that I don't have an allegiance to oil, but I, I definitely look for name brand oil, quality oil. And I didn't know what to expect when I got the Valvoline, but it fit the specification. Now I've had specifications before go awry, but this fit. And then the first time I ran it, it was fantastic. I lost no oil and that was enough for me. We're going to go ahead and pour the next five quarts in with this easy pour spout. 5W30, full synthetic, Valvoline, Dexos 2. Again, I'm not saying this oil is better than others, but it has proven to work fantastic in this engine. 
I'm very impressed with it. When I bought this car, it had 17,000 miles on it. And I was shocked that it was using oil, but it didn't have the proper oil in it. I don't know what it was, but the stuff was like water. It was not good. All right, and then I used those buckets that I just emptied to pour the old oil in. There's the old oil. We will pour that into these. There's a shop up the street that has, um, that heats itself with used motor oil. So we will return our oil, our used oil to those guys and they'll use it to keep their shop warm. All right, that's in, engine sealed. We're gonna start it. I'm gonna see if that engine code goes out. All right, engine light, still on. We'll let it run a little bit. We'll get that code. You know what, next time instead of jacking up the car, I'm just gonna turn those little planks of wood into ramps. I'm gonna screw them together so they're stepped. And I'm just gonna drive up on them. There's no reason to jack up the car. Oh yeah, she's in safe. That looks great. All right, we're good. Now we gotta find out what through the error code. All right, that's that. Auto link in process. Fuel trim system lean, generic stored. This exactly what I thought it was gonna be. Come look. All right, let's clear it. In my hands. Erase request has been sent because it's a request. They have to negotiate. They gotta talk about it. Okay, I'm done with my oil change. CRC intake valve cleaner. The car's just rock solid steady. Coming up next, I've got some motorcycle stuff to do. So hey, that's it. I'm all done. The car's good for the rest of the winter. Won't have to worry about it until spring. Uh, hey, next up, I'm gonna tear my motorcycle apart. I've gotta do a valve clearance check and uh, oil change and spark plugs. So that should be a fun winter project. And I'm looking forward to uh, sharing that with you as well. Thanks for watching. Have a happy new year. And uh, boy, I really enjoy making these videos and seeing comments come back. Seriously, anytime uh, I can help someone, uh, I really uh, am very thankful that I can do that. And um, again, happy new year to you and your family. Uh, I pray that your year is filled with blessings. God bless you. See you.